Hello there, my fellow Inner Sphere pilots, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Battletech Battlemax lore. Before I begin, I would like to correct a mistake from my previous Battletech poll. You see, in that poll, I added the Exterminator as an option, but I kind of forgot that I had already covered the Exterminator. So, instead, I made a video on the second most voted mech from that poll, which in this case was the Wolverine. I'm sorry for the mistake, but it is kinda hard to remember which mechs I've already covered after talking about more than 30 of them. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? For some basic Wolverine stats, we have... It is a medium weight mech, weighing at 55 tons, its top speed is 86 km an hour, and its rounded price is 4,828,000 Seabills. The Wolverine was developed as a fast strike battle mech, one which could take part in missions requiring speed and firepower, but too hazardous for lighter recon mechs. Although meeting all the requirements for such a machine, the Wolverine has since become known for its versatility and it is considered a jack-of-all-trades throughout the Inner Sphere. With the same electronics package as the Phoenix Hawk and mobility that allows it to keep up with many other medium mechs, the Wolverine is often used for command purposes when working with medium units. The early history of the Wolverine was born as a direct result of the Federated Sun's need for a frontline unit that could keep up with a forward advance and outmaneuver enemy battle mechs. At the time, while they did field their own versions of the Maki and the Battle Axe, these were too massive, too slow, and too lacking in maneuverability. When the Terran hegemony debited their Shadowhawk and Griffin, the Davions suddenly had their answer. Fierce competition followed suit by companies within Richard Varney's Capellan March, with Norse Battlemech Works ultimately winning a contract with the AFFS. The designers, led by supervising engineer Russell Bell, while using the aforementioned inspirations, they opted for maneuverability instead, followed by a balanced weapons loadout with both offensive reach and close-in firepower without taxing heat exchange systems. Initially, this was accomplished with the inclusion of a prototype autocannon and medium-class laser. Norse Battlemech Works felt this made the design too lightly armed compared to the competitors it was influenced by. The design team made arrangements to allow the initial prototype to mount a PPC, and additional heatsinks in place of the autocannon. But the first PPC they were able to acquire was completely unsuitable for the test frame due to significant overheating and EM interference. This initial failure did not go unnoticed by the AFFS High Command, and they urged the company to stick with the initial proposed design. Most of the armor was focused on the legs and the arms, while extra plating was specially placed around the main joints to protect from shrapnel and debris. The end result was a mech that was more stable, cooler running, and could endure severe punishment while out jumping Shadowhawks and Griffins. Prince Varney himself would receive the very first four production grade WVR 1R Wolverines in 2471. It would go on to become the standard AFFS battle mech for many centuries, ironically serving as a template for the hegemony's upgrades of the mech it was based on. To counter this, Norse Battlemax introduced yet another more influential variant in 2490, known as the WVR-3R, and would not be fully upgraded to modern standards for another 85 years. Purchasing the primary production rights to the design from Norse, Kalan Industries introduced the definitive WVR-6R Wolverine in 2575, for the newly formed Star League Defense Force in the lead-up to the Reunification War, where it did serve with distinction. Afterwards, it was approved for use by the Great Houses and became quite common on the battlefields of the Succession Wars. Besides being produced by Kalan's factories on Nanking and Fermopolis, Free World's Defense Industries and Victory Industries later acquired the rights to build Wolverines from their own plants. 
The Free Worlds League was thus the largest user of the Wolverine, followed thereafter by the Federated Sons, turned Federated Commonwealth. The Fourth Succession War brought about small changes when House Davion captured Nanking from the Capellan Confederation, but lost Marduk to the Draconis Combine. During the Combine Ghost Bear War, House Kurita found itself running short on equipment when they lost Marduk and Al Nair to Duke James Sandoval's surprise attack. Inspired by Vicor Industries' Project Phoenix initiative, Victory Industries went about scouring the entire combine for any World Wolverine chassis in order to perform a complete strip, disassembling those in the worst shape for their parts and apply a modernizing refit to the rest. The Federated Sons was similarly inspired by the success of this initiative to perform their own updates on the aging design. The Wolverine carries a weapons payload that is both versatile and at the same time limited by its ammunition dependency. The main weapon on board is a GM Whirlwind Autocannon 5. This weapon, mounted in the right arm along with one ton of ammo, allows the Wolverine to cause damage to the enemy at a respectable range. This is backed up for short range by a Harpoon 6 SRM-6 launcher with one ton of ammo in the left torso and a single Magna Mark II medium laser mounted in the head. The laser is the most unique aspect to the Wolverine, as it is mounted in a bolt turret originally providing a 360 degree field of fire. Following the addition of a harpoon launcher and tech Battlecom electronics blister, a fire interrupt circuit had to be added to prevent pilots from shooting their own mech. Five Northrop jump jets, with two in either leg and a fifth in the rear torso, improves upon the Wolverine's already fast cruising speed of 54 kph by allowing it to jump up to 150 meters at a time. Unfortunately, the jets are slightly underpowered for the row, and must be operated near maximum thrust to achieve their potential, resulting in increased wear and tear on the equipment. For this reason, a number of the variants were introduced which removed the jump jets altogether. Nine and a half tons of armor make the Wolverine very well protected, and emphasize its survivability when undertaking dangerous reconnaissance missions. Twelve heat sinks also provide adequate heat dissipation even in the event of damage to the fusion engine, further emphasizing the durability of the entire machine. In its role as a command mech, the Wolverine is well equipped with the same tech battlecom system with multi-channel transceiver receiver as found on the Phoenix Hawk. Next, we shall talk about the variants, and oh boy, there's quite a few, even after trimming the proverbial fat. The WVR-1R Infamously nicknamed into the Varney 1R, the original primitive Wolverine was introduced in 2471. It mounted an autocannon 5 with 2 tons of ammo in the right arm and a medium laser in the left to provide coverage in the weak zone 60 meters inside the main gun's reach. A 265 primitive engine gave this mech a top speed of 64 kph with four prototype jump jets providing enhanced mobility for a total jumping distance of 120 meters. The design was also heavily protected by a whopping 14.5 tons of armor. The WVR-3R This one entered production in 2490. It was built in response to the Terran hegemonies creating new versions of the mechs the Wolverine was actually based on. It traded in 3 tons of armor and a ton of autocannon ammo for a shoulder-mounted 6-pack SRM launcher with 1 ton of reloads, a loadout which would remain essentially unchanged for the later modernized 6R. The WVR-6K The 6K Wolverine was introduced by the Dragonis Combine in 2598, when they decided to produce a variant that removed the troublesome jump jets. Retaining the head laser and SRM launcher, it also replaces the autocannon for a large laser, a medium laser, and a small laser in the right arm. Additionally, this variant also adds two more heat sinks and two more tons of armor. The WVR-7D 
This one is a major upgrade of the design introduced in 3050 by the Federated Sun's new Nanking factory. The standard engine on the mech was replaced by a Nissan 275XL version, and the armor was upgraded to Kialan Unity Weave ferrofibrous material with an extra half a ton added. To increase the speed of the Wolverine, mask has also been added, allowing it to move up to 108 kilometers in a burst. Finally, the weapon's payload was upgraded as well. The autocannon was changed to a General Motors Nova 5 Ultra Autocannon 5, and the medium laser is now a suitable precision line medium pulse laser. The design retains its jumping capability, as well as the SRM-6, although Case now protects the SRM reloads. The WVR-7H This one is similar in many ways to the 7D, and it is referred to as the Wolverine 2. It was used by the Royal Brigades of the SLDF starting in 2770, but it was also an upgrade of the 6R. It utilizes an endosteel structure, ferrofibrous armor, and double heatsinks to increase combat capability. Extra armor protects the legs, while case protects all the ammo bins. Just like the 7D, the autocannon is upgraded to an ultra-class model, and the medium laser to a pulse version. In addition, the SRM-6 is slaved to an Artemis IV fire control system to improve the accuracy of the missiles. The WVR-7K This is another major upgrade of the Wolverine, this one for the Combine, and first rolled off the production line in 3050. It was built with an XL engine for power, with the saved weight used to increase and upgrade the arsenal. The main weapon is a Victory Drumbeat Large Pulse Laser, and the Victory Throb Small Pulse Laser in the right arm, which is backed up by a Medium Pulse Laser in the head, and two Telos 6 SRM-6 launchers in the left and right torsos, with one ton of reloads each. The mech uses 13 double heatsinks to dissipate any heat from the laser arsenal. Additionally, it also has a jump jet and can jump up to 150 meters. The armor is also increased by one and a half tons. The WVR-8K The 8K Wolverine was first introduced by the Combine in 3064, when Victory Industries decided to update the design. It is built on an XL engine for power and uses 15 double heatsinks for its high heat load. This variant carries as the main weapon a Lord's Light ERPPC in the right arm, backed up by a Diverse Optics ER medium laser also in the right arm, and a Victory Heartbeat medium pulse laser in the head. Finally, to exploit any weak points in the enemy's armor, it carries a Streak SRM-6 launcher in the left torso along with one ton of ammo. 12 tons of Starshield A armor with case provide additional protection, with the plating designed specifically to make repairs quicker to accomplish. The WVR-8C This one was introduced by Victory Industries in 3067 after the success of the 8K. It is built on an endosteel chassis and uses an XL engine for power. It carries a large pulse laser as the main gun, as well as a medium pulse laser and a small pulse laser. Additionally, for close combat capability, it has two Streak SRM-6 launchers, while a C-Free Slave unit allows it to share targeting data with friendly units. The WVR-8D this is the other of the two updated versions introduced by Calon in 3066 that incorporates some of the newest equipment to the AFFS. It is built with an endosteel chassis with an XL engine augmented with mask, enabling burst of speed of up to 108 km an hour. Its main gun is a rotary autocannon 2, backed up by an ER medium laser and a Streak SRM-6 launcher. Both the rotary autocannon and the ER medium laser are linked to an advanced targeting computer, making this Wolverine extremely accurate. However, the design only carries 10 double heatsinks. The WVR-9D This one is the companion of the 8D and does share some similarities, such as the endosteel chassis and the XL engine. 
It was first fielded at the same time as the 8D, and carries as the main weapons a rotary autocannon 2 with two medium pulse lasers and a streak SRM-6 launcher. It also carries a TAG laser designator to assign targets for Arrow 4 artillery strikes. Unlike the 8D, this variant does not jump. The WVR-9W This is a 3077 variant carrying a pair of light PPCs, an MML-5 with Artemis 4, and a single medium laser. To coordinate fire with friendly units, it is equipped with an improved C3 computer. Seven improved jump jets provide a whooping 2-10 meter jump range, and the mech is protected by an experimental Case 2 system and light ferrofibrous armor. The WVR-9W2 This one is a slight upgrade of the 9W. It was introduced in 3084, and it has an ER medium laser and an ER small laser to provide close-range firepower. An Artemis 4 system attached to an MML-5 and a pair of light PPCs provide long-range firepower. A C-Free slave shares targeting data, while a Guardian ECM suite disrupts enemy electronics. Light ferrofibrous armor and case protect this Wolverine, with seven improved jump jets improving mobility. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Wolverine medium battle mech for today. As the name suggests, I think this guy is quite a scrapper, and with a lot of armor, for a medium mech anyway, it is probably equipped to emerge victorious most of the time. Just like the Shadowhawk, it is a good jack-of-all-trades kind of mech, at least in my opinion. Is the Wolverine among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? As always, feel free to share your thoughts, opinions and experiences with it in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.